like to discuss the topic of magic as spiritual practice. Lives. And look to the problems that are presented to us. And within the problem, there is a lesson for us to learn. And the problem itself, the solving of the problem, stimulates thinking, which stimulates progress. And that's what we, that's what we uh, teach is the goal of our existence here is, is progress. And we would say that we are, our goal here is to become perfect. Another way of saying that is to become perfected, is to become peaceful. It's the um, alchemy that is discussed in, in uh, medieval philosophy. The alchemy was t- talking about taking a base metal and transforming it into gold. And that, of course, um, spiritually is speaking to the taking of the base level humanity and transmuting it into that which is godlike. And so all spiritual practices is is, uh, is geared toward that in some way or another, regardless of how they talk about it. So when we're talking about problem solving, there are, as I discuss from my perspective, and this is my way of discussing it, there are two ways magically to approach problem solving. One is what I call sorcery, and the other one is what I call alchemy. And they're both a magic magic. The the sorcery way of solving our problems, as you've probably heard me discuss before, is when I'm going to take my will and I'm going to force my will upon a situation and I'm going to make something happen, no matter what, it's going to be this way. And when we're talking about it from a magical perspective, not just in in our lives, but we, we do we're sorcerers sometimes in our lives too, without without even talking about magic, just trying to force our will upon situations. But from a magical perspective, that would say that would be like, oh, okay, I see. So I need money today. Therefore, I'm going to go get some green candles and some bayberry oil, and um, maybe some some lavender flowers. And I'm going to 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 put the to to put my the desired amount of money that I want on this on this so uh, scratch it onto the to the uh, green candle. I'm going to anoint it with the the Bay Bear oil, and I'm going to circle the candle with a ring of lavender flowers, and I'm going to light that candle, and then I'm going to visualize a particular result happening. Okay, there's nothing wrong with that. In fact, we would recommend you do that, right? The difference in in that particular spell between magic, I mean, I'm sorry, magic as sorcery and magic as alchemy would be in the way that we let go of it. So yes, okay. So I'm gonna. I, 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 so let's say let's just take this example farther. From a, from if I was being sor- if I was a sorcerer, I would say okay, I'm going to have this particular job at this particular company making this amount of money, and until I saw that result happen. I would continue with my magic and continue with that work and continue with that candle until I saw that actual result occur in the physical world. Now, from the naked eye, the way that the alchemist from, uh, would, would approach this might look identical, might have the same candle, might have the same flowers, might have the same, same oil, and might have the same goal, that I want this job. The difference is that the alchemist would say, Ah, uh, but I've got a, I've got a mental teacher. I've got within me a teacher who has a vantage point of, of past, present, and future that I don't have. So I'm going to take this spell. I'm going to do the same thing. I'm going to visualize what I want, and I'm going to call that teacher into my working, and I'm going to say, I don't know what's good for me. I don't know what's the best possible outcome, but you do. So this is my best. This is my best thinking. This is my best that I can come up with as a solution to this problem. But I'm open to being taught. And there's the difference. The sorcerer is just going to stick their heels in and they're not going to they're not going to stop until they get the particular result. The alchemist, on the other hand, once they've done their work, they're happy. They know that it's. They know that 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 the solution is 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 on its way, and they go about their way. 
when the job comes or the money comes, the alchemist is able to say, oh, I see. This happened in a way that wasn't what I said I wanted, but it's so much better because my mental teacher was able to tweak things for me, was able to was able to to let me see things from a different perspective. And now I'm so happy that it didn't work out the way that I said it. I wanted it to, because if it had, I'd be so busy doing that job. I wouldn't have time to do this other thing that's come my way. Does that make sense? So that's just, that's that's just a a little example. Now, what I want to talk about actually though, in regards to, to this is spiritual practice daily spiritual practice because just like when you go to the gym and you work out your body or you go to a yoga class or you go to a tai bo class or you do, go to a ballet class or or anything like that you go there and you work certain muscles and you get stronger or say you want to learn an instrument so you want to learn how to play the guitar and you go to a teacher and they give you exercises so that you can um, you can limber up your fingers and make them make them hit the strings in the proper way um, and, and get used to the different configura- the configurations of those chords. And you practice and you get better and better by practicing every day. So it is with us with magic. Magic isn't something we, we wait until we have a problem to solve to start practicing. We have we practice daily. We practice our scales daily. And for us, our magical scales that we practice are in the form of meditation. In order to be able to converse with the inner teacher, and by the way, the inner teacher, the mental teacher, I don't care what system you're from, they all have a name for it. It's the Holy Guardian Angel to the Kabbalist. It's the mental teacher to us in the DCW. It's the spirit guide to a lot of people. in the East, it's called the guru. And it's an interesting thing about guru is people misunderstand guru. The concept of the guru is that, yes, sometimes a, a teacher, a guru will, hap, will will come along in physical form, just like with anything. There's a teacher that comes along, in phys, a, a physical person who's a teacher. But a, a true guru in physical form, their only job is to lead you to the guru within uh, the true guru, the true teacher, the 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 is the true genius, the genie in the bottle, is only within the mind of the practitioner. So, our job is to be able to sit down and meditate and to Got a problem, and you need a quick solution. The golden key is always available to you to solve that problem immediately. And that is to stop thinking about the problem and think about God instead. Now, again, he's from a, 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 a Christian faith. We would say, stop thinking about your problem and go within and talk to the teacher. Or, or think about, or, or invoke God, or invoke goddess, and, and do an invocation. You know, there's two types of magic, um, definitions of magic. There's thaumaturgy and theurgy. And thaumaturgy um, is the what, what I was talking about sort of with sorcery, but not necessarily. It's, 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 it's trying to, to create a particular result in the physical world using invisible means. That's magic. That's, that's, that's thaumaturgy. Theurgy is using magic as invocation for the purpose of becoming one, as Crowley would say, with uh, uh, to, to the, the knowledge and conversation of the Holy Guardian Angel, or to become one with our higher self, to become one with that which is perfect, or as Eli would say, to become perfect, to become perfect, to become like unto the angels, he describes it in our landmarks. So, What's interesting about that is that it's not that you shouldn't do thaumaturgy. It's not that you shouldn't do spells. Absolutely. In fact, we encourage it because they get you at least going to the source of, of your, of the, of the solutions of your problems, which is internal, which is the mind. So whatever your problems, yes, do magic, but think in terms of, I'm going to take this to the teacher within me and do it from there. And also, why wait until I've got a problem to solve 
to go to the teacher within me. If I'm going to that teacher within me once or twice or three times a day, I probably won't have to do as many spells. I won't need to do as many spells. All right, so let's look at the uh, let's look at nature. Let's look at the the animal kingdom in nature, of which we are part. We are animals. We are mammals, right? But what's the what's a big difference between the way our bodies are constructed versus the way other mammals' bodies are constructed? Well, most of us don't have fur like they do. I mean, a lot of a lot of us have more hair than we would like, but <laughs> on our bodies. But we don't have coats of fur like a lot of mammals. What else don't we have? We don't have claws. We don't have fangs. We don't have the defenses that most other mammals do. Is that because God created us defenseless? No. It's because our defense, our defenses lie within our ability to use our intuition, is to be intuitive beings. We don't need to fight. We don't need to. We are not meant, we were not created, in my opinion, to fight. We were created to intuit. We were, in, we were created to, uh, to steward this earth, to be, to be the peaceful guardians of this earth. And the only way that we can intuit is to go to the source to the source within us on a daily basis. We must practice. Practice makes perfect. If you want to perfect, how do you do it? You practice. You practice being perfect. You act like a perfect person. A perfect person knows how to sit still and listen to the still small voice within them. Right? When we've got a problem, when we've got, when we've got an emotion within us that is tearing at us, rather than acting out on that emotion, if we've been practicing, we can take a few breaths and take a moment and go within and ask that higher part of ourselves, that teacher within us, that guru, if you will, within us, what is my most perfect step now. It's unbelievable how interesting that can be for you. I was talking to somebody the other day about, um, and, and I'm a firm, I'm, I'm a real firm believer, and I do teach goal setting because I think if you have goals, you tend to be happier. You tend to you tend to have things that you're working towards. You don't have as much time to sit around and gossip and 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 bug people because you're so so busy working on yourself. But I was reading some some business books and things like that, and they said that this is what you have to do if you want to be successful in entrepreneur. You have to write these goals, and you have to write them down in a specific way, and you have to have a business plan, and you have to do this, and you have to do that. And I'm not saying that those things aren't good, but I have a very successful business, and I didn't do any of that. <laughs> <laughs> I literally did none of that. And I thought, I didn't do any of that. All I did was follow my my intuition. All I did was follow my hunches. That's all I did. And I don't think that I'm special. I really, in fact, I'm, I think I'm quite ordinary. I think I'm quite an ordinary person. I don't, I don't think there's at one thing about me that's special. But the only thing that I've done that a lot of other people haven't done is practice. You know, I know some people that that are really, really good guitar players. I don't think that they're necessarily more talented than other guitar players, but they practice more. Right. So, in the same thing, in the realms of of consciousness, in the in the in the magical world, those of us who work a spiritual discipline daily. And it doesn't have to be anything, any one form. I mean, for you, I mean, your 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 discipline will might what might look really really different from mine. Um, you know, I know some people. Their discipline is to uh, is to do Sufi dancing in the morning, and that's fine. I don't do Sufi dancing, but they they're, they they that's their spiritual practice. I know I, I I need to do yoga in the morning before I meditate because otherwise I don't have the I don't I don't have the um, 
the ability to let go of my my tension in my body as easily. So that works for me. And I do, but I have to do it every morning. I, I have to do a yoga session in the morning, and then I have to to meditate, and I have to just sit down and be quiet. Um, I need to do rituals. I mean, I'm one of those people that needs to do some ritual. I can't only just sit um, and and feel satisfied. I need to do ceremony. That makes me feel good. Um, I know a lot of people, they have to do a spell a day and I'm all for it. I mean, they're really good at the candle magic and they're really good with the, the all that stuff. And they and they do, and they have gorgeous altars, and 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 but they but they do it. That's my point: is that they do something, anything that's spiritual every day, and they have a discipline. And that's what I encourage you to look at: is what could you do starting today to if you don't have a, a spiritual discipline that that gets you relaxing your body and gives you at least at one point in your in your spiritual practice some moments of silence where you're able to really go within deep within and listen to that still small voice within you and to seek first the kingdom of heaven right and if you already are doing a spiritual practice yet you aren't getting the results in your life and you're not happy yet well, what could you do differently what could you add to it or subtract from it are you sitting peacefully? You know, one of the easiest meditations is um, is often, you know, just brushed off as being too simple. But I think it's one of the most powerful meditations that there is. And you can get a book on this particular meditation. It's called the Relaxation Response, and it's not a um, it's not a spiritual book, if I remember correctly. I haven't read it in a long time, but it's it, it's. One of it's only a uh, it's a book that that describes this meditation technique, but this meditation technique is used by a lot of different uh, spiritual communities and and different paths, and it's where you take a particular phrase, and if you have a two word phrase, that's great. If you have a one word phrase, that's great. But it needs to be a short little phrase, a little a little phrase that you can say to yourself silently. They would call in in the East. They might call it a mantra, and a silent mantra, that you can say. And and when you take a breath in, you say the the first word, and when you exhale, you say the second word. Or if it's just one word, when you inhale, you say the word, and when you exhale, you say the word. And you just notice your breathing. It's not a big. It's not any special kind of breathing. You just notice your breathing, and you keep repeating that phrase. The purpose for repeating that phrase is not to do anything other than remind you when your mind starts wandering to come back to here and now. It's a, and it's amazing what it can do for you if you can learn to practice that 15, 20 minutes a day. Now, what I would recommend is if you don't have a history of, of meditating, that you take a, a little uh, timer and you start out with one minute. And it, say, say your phrase is blessed be. And you just take that that word blessed be and you, you on inhale you say blessed on exhale you you think be inhale you think blessed exhale you think be over and over again what a powerful thing what more powerful mantra in the world could there be than blessed be now you do that for a minute in the morning and you do that for a minute at night and when that gets comfortable, maybe after a day or two, bump it up to two minutes. There's no rush. It's like, this is this is for life, people. This is for life. So there's no rush. When that gets comfortable, you bump it up to three minutes and so on until you're getting to where you're meditating for 20, 30 minutes a day in the morning and 20, 30 minutes a day at night. Just for the purpose of allowing all of the mind watering mind wandering all of the mental chatter to have a moment's rest so that the mental teacher can come within and it's those spaces between the thoughts that start to get bigger and bigger and bigger and that's magic that's alchemy right there because you start to find out who you are 
underneath all that chatter, who you are underneath all that mask that you wear, who you are underneath all of these all these illusions that you've always been carrying around about yourself that you picked up from your childhood, that you picked up from the television, that you picked up from whatever. And you realize that none of it's real. And within that realization, you find power beyond belief, literally. Power beyond belief. That's where the still small voice is, and that's where God and goddess live. And that's where they live. They live within us, and they live within our minds, and they live as us and through us. So seek ye first the kingdom of heaven absolutely means going within and finding that temple within. Now, if if that doesn't appeal to you, that type of meditation, that's okay. You can do something else. There's there's guided meditations that you could do. There's tapes. I mean, we have a few on our website that I'm hopefully going to to um, expand as I get more time. But whatever it is, I don't care. As long as you get to a place where you have some moments in the morning before you start your day, and you have some moments in the evening as you end your day where it's sacred space. It's sacred space. Now, I know for me, when I started out in the craft, I needed to cast a magic circle in the morning and a magic circle at night. And I needed to do my quarters and and, and the salt water and the fire and air and all that stuff, purification. I did that for years. And it was a wonderful thing for me to, to use to get into that habit. Because like I said, I love ceremony. I love it. Now, I don't do that particular method anymore because it's after you've done that for several years really literally you can do it in your head you don't need (laughs) you don't need the salt water you don't need the fire and air but if you don't have a if you don't have a history of really doing that on a daily basis i would recommend that you do now um there's so many books on how to cast a circle in, in from a wiccan perspective and if you're not into the wicca Thing I mean, you know, the, I think Scott Cunningham's Guide for the Solitary Practitioner has a as a method in there, and you can get it from the Ferrars books, and I'm sure that Silver, whatever Raven Wolf I think is her name has has it in in her books. How does how to create uh, Starhawk has it in her book, um, The Spiral Dance: How to Cast a Circle. It's a wonderful thing to do, but if you're not into that. Maybe if you want to do, if you want to, uh, if you want to create sacred space and you want to do a ceremony, maybe the uh, the lesser banishing ritual, the pentagram from a Kabbalistic tradition, might be something that would be interesting to you. And I, that's another thing that I <laughs> I did that for several years, every every morning and every night, um, the Kabbalistic cross and the and the lesser banishing ritual, the pentagram, just to clear out that gunk out of out of the surroundings and out of the surroundings literally means out of your mind too because there'd be no gunk in your surroundings if there was no gunk in your mind if we were really really clear pure beings every place we walked would be sacred space but that's the point that's where we want to get to we want to get to that place of remembrance that every place we walk is sacred ground and every one we meet is blessed by our presence. We don't get there without practicing, though. We've got to get there through this daily practice of magical working. And it's so much fun. That's the other thing. That's what I love about the craft is it's fun. It's not a drudgery. It's not like when I used to have to go to church when I was a Catholic. No offense to any Catholics listening, but that was not my idea of a good time. It was not for me. But once I found the craft and I got into the rituals and I got into the into the magic, spiritual practice became so much fun. As long as I kept my mind focused on our teachings that talked about the mental teacher within, and I remembered that the purpose for all of this ritual was to bring me back to that still small voice within me. And I invite you to do the same. And I hope that that this little podcast today gave you something to think about, at least, as far as getting your spiritual practice back on track if you have been slacking off a bit. 
and or maybe upgrading it to a place where you're able to have a deeper sense of your own connection to spirit. Because remember, our problems are nothing compared to the beauty and the power of the spirit within us. There's absolutely no problem, no matter what it is, that cannot be overcome by the spirit that is within us. And that is what magic is all about. Thank you so much for listening. I can't wait to hear from you. Please keep emailing me. I love hearing from you. And I will talk to you next time. Blessed be. 